Good evening, class. My name is Pam Turner, and I'll be the moderator for this evening's lecture. And welcome to another lecture presented by the Tampa class. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, in the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. 
These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men, whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. This evening, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Lisa Zaizi. I don't have access to the the, the um, pre-recorded music um, this evening, so we, we will not have a musical selection. Our scripture will be read by Dr. Carol Miller, which is Daniel, the sixth chapter. And our scripture readers this evening are Drs. Carol Miller and Dr. Latara Burley. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let's all take a minute and just place our minds ready to listen. Yashua, we are so grateful that we have another opportunity to listen to anything that you have to teach us. We appreciate all the help that you've been given us up until now and hope that you continue. We need you and we want to learn as much as we can because we're going to need it. We, we will lean on each other and look to you for guidance and support. And we thank you for everything. Let's all say it together. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Am I close enough? Can you hear me? Yep. Sounds good. I'll be reading Daniel from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association. In the third year of the reign of jo Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And Yahweh gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of Elohim, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his deity. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his deity. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish. Supposed to be chapter six? 
Oh, I thought he said Daniel 1. Oh. Should be yeah, six. I was like, is that oh, Daniel 6? <laughs> Daniel, yeah, Daniel 6. I see Daniel it six. now. I wrote it down now. I don't know why. I, sorry. <laughs> I read quite a bit of that, you guys. Well, I wasn't sure because sometimes the holy name is different. Oh, okay. All right. I got six. <laughs> In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even un unto me, Daniel, after that, which appeared unto me at the first. What? Stop. Is that the sixth chapter? That's not no. the sixth. It says not the sixth in mine. Oh, you got the holy name. That's the fifth in the holy name Bible. It's mine in the King James Version. It pleased Darius to set over us the kingdom, 120 princes. What Kathy, why don't you go ahead and read it then, please? Okay. Uh, Daniel, the sixth chapter out of King James Version, inserting the true and correct names were necessary. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the realm, oops. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his Elohim. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his Elohim as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his Elohim. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he had heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree or statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy Elohim, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. 
Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were there instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from before him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions, unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living Elohim, is thy Elohim whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My Elohim has shut, has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his Elohim. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery over them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the Elohim of Daniel, for he is the living Elohim, and steadfast forever in his kingdom, that which shall not be, I'm sorry, in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his kingdom shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. That was Daniel the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I'm I'm going to get into something. I hope you guys don't mind that I, uh, I, I don't know if it'll take the whole class. It, it, it may. So we're happy. It, <laughs> you're happy. Okay. Um, the, what, what I would like to talk about specifically now, this, this, this chapter in Daniel is, is just full of good stuff, but I'm only going to talk about a couple of things. I mean, you can see how, how Daniel, uh, you know, went through a death, a burial and a resurrection. And just like Yahshua's tomb, they rolled a rock over the tomb and, uh, you know, he resurrected from that state and, um, how that they falsely accused him, like they falsely accused Yahshua. And, you know, so there's just, so many principles in there and and also the you know that no bones could be broken of daniel and because you have where the the lions broke the bones of the people so there's a lot of really good stuff in here but uh the thing that i want to kind of talk about a little bit and i'm not claiming to be an expert on it i'm just going to show you basically principles of it in the law and the prophets and uh, in the fulfillment too. And um, and also uh, show you uh, uh, witnesses in the physical creation um, because that's how we're supposed to teach is law, prophets, fulfillment and the creation. I mean, the creation is a tremendous witness. And, um, you know, uh, when I came into class, you know, I was just a kid, but, um, you know, once I heard how, you know, scientific things can show me about my creator, my goal uh, was to get into college and to study science, the sciences. And, uh, you know, and that's why, you know, also, you know, I, I, I worked in science and I eventually, you know, was, was, uh, 
able to get a master's and a PhD in, in cellular and molecular biology. And it's all because of, of what I, you know, learned down in this class that I was motivated, you know, to do all that. Now, um, the thing that I, that cat caught my eye on in the scripture, I remember, this is a long time ago, uh, where I started thinking about this. Um, Chuck and, um, and Dave Willikett, uh, uh, we're going, we're, we're scuba diving and they took me along for the ride. I didn't scuba dive. Um, so they, they went out into to this lake and went scuba diving. And, uh, you know, I'm searching around for something to read. And I found this article on a certain type of cell and how it operates in the human body. And you think of when you think of the body, I mean, there's a lot of ways to, to think of the body, but uh, one way that I look at the body is I look at the human body as the body of Yahshua, the Messiah, and that we are, you know, members of that body in particular, as it says. And, you know, you think about it too, that, um, uh, you know, from a scientific standpoint, um, you know, they... They used to uh, estimate um, uh, how many stars there were in, in the universe. And um, they don't do that anymore uh, because it's, it's essentially impossible to determine that because there's so many. And um, the same kind of thing has, uh, is, 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 has always gone along uh, with the human body and how many cells there are in the body. And, you know, it, it, it started out at 3 million and, you know, 4 million, 5 million. And, and now I believe it's in the billions or, or maybe even trillions by now that how many estimate uh, how many cells are in the body. And if our body is a type of the body of Yahshua Messiah, that's a lot of that's a lot of souls. Okay. That's a whole lot of souls. And in Yahweh's purpose, um, you see those souls are manifested in, 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 in two uh, types of manifestations. And that is um, you have people that receive the Holy spirit in this creation in a physical body, but you also have uh, the angelic creation. And, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I want to, um, you know, show you that um, they are our brethren, okay? And that they also, you see, received the Holy Spirit um, uh, w when it was poured out along with us, okay? And, and that, um, you know, they are, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Kinley, you know, talked about them. And, and how that they're intricately uh, uh, involved in Yahweh's purpose and plan. So, I mean, here you have, if you, if you would please um, start at verse 21. Daniel 6 and 21. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My Elohim have sent his angel and have shut the lion's mouth that they should not hurt me for as much as before him, innocence was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. So Yahweh sent an angel, his angel. Uh, yeah, his angel. Okay. And that that angel shut the, the lion's mouth. Okay. And so that he had no hurt on him. And so you can see that Yahweh was utilizing, um, you see that it, you know the angelic creation in his purpose now it's 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 talked about throughout the book and what i want to really what i want to uh, kind of focus in on is uh is really what 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 the purpose of the angels are um you know how how are they how are not not their purpose but how how do they interact 
um, and operate in the purpose of Yahweh. Now, I would be, uh, uh, you know, a knucklehead if I said that I really knew very much about this subject. Okay, I'm just going to give you what I read in the scriptures. Okay, and um, you know, law, prophets, fulfillment. And I'm, I'd like to give you a, a, a kind of beautiful example in the physical creation, okay, to, to, to work with in this, okay. So, um, so you know, Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. So you, if, you, if you're, if you're going to prove out anything, okay, and like I said, that... <laughs> You know, I'm not claiming to be an expert or claiming to uh, be all knowledgeable about this subject, but it's a subject that I think it's interesting. And, um, you know, I'm just going to uh, 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 work with a few things on it. And, and uh, you know, if, if it just gets you thinking about it, if you, if you think, oh, Joel doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Well, that wouldn't be the first time, you know, um, or you, you, you may think, well, maybe, you know, this is, is, is food for thought. Okay. And that, that's, that's, you know, how I want to approach it. Cause I, cause you know, like there's a lot of people out here, you know, wearing angels, this and angels that, and, and I had a friend, um, you know, uh, that, that, um, that, that, uh, swore that she saw angels all the time and stuff like that. But, you know, in Yahweh's purpose, there's two flavors of angels. Okay, mm -hmm. you have the mystery of iniquity and you have the mystery of righteousness. And so, you know, when people tell me or, or, or people, at least, well, this one person told me, you know, I, I, you know, my, my first impulse was, yeah, what kind of angel was that? <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. it didn't seem to be helping her a whole lot, you know, but, um, uh, you know, and, and people, you know, uh, actually get for me uh, Colossians uh, 2 and 18. And this kind of will sum up what I'm trying to say here. Um, and uh, also get me Revelation uh, 22 and 8. Okay. Colossians 2 and 18. Yeah. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Now, you, now see... People uh, out here in, you know, not, I'm not talking about people in class. I'm talking about people out here in the world. They, they, they literally worship angels. They pray to angels. Um, you know, like, uh, like this, this, this friend that I had, she believed that uh, she talked to Michael, the archangel and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, if, if he did, then she'd know the name. Okay. And, um, I did ask her if she knew the true names and she, she did say that she did, but she never, you know, she always used God, Lord God and Jesus. Okay. And, uh, but anyways, you see people out here, they're wearing angel jewelry. They're, you know, all kinds of stuff and people are worshiping angels. And, um, you know, it says, in, it's, it says in the scriptures, you know, I actually get that for me. Revelation 22 and 8. Okay. Revelation 22 and 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard from them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, see thou do it not. For I am. <laughs> that, that old English. See thou right. do it not. <laughs> He, see, let, let me let me put that in today's language. Get the hell up, John. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, the angels know, you see, those in righteousness. They only worship Yahshua. They don't, you see, I mean, the the the, the you have, I mean, you can you can go back and you can read about how the angelic, how you know, um uh you know, a third in uh, uh was cast out, okay. And um, because what they did is they were worshiping an angel. They were worshiping Satan. Okay. And they thought he was it until Yahshua revealed himself, you mm -hmm. know, up there in that angelic wash, Yahshua just walked around like any other man. Now, how do you know that? Because when he came down into the creation, he did, you, if, 
it, it says there was no comeliness that you would desire. He didn't, he didn't like, you know, like in the paintings have halos. He's walking around with a halo over his head. Okay. Or anything like that. He wasn't blonde haired, blue eyed. He wasn't pretty. Um, you know, he just looked like anybody else. And you look at Dr. Kinley. All right. He was kind of on the short side. Okay. He was, uh, you know, an African-American in 1932. Who's going to listen to an African-American in 1932? Okay. I mean, things have changed a lot since then, but I mean, they, they really need to change a whole lot more. Um, but you, you see, I mean, for Yahweh to come down at the end of this age and manifest in that body, you're, you're seeing some real humility. And Dr. Kinley did not want people to worship him, you know, and, and, and that's what they're, that's what they've done in Los Angeles is, uh, they've replaced the name of Yahshua with Dr. Kinley. And, you know, we had those visitors lately and they were Dr. Kinley, Dr. Kinley, Dr. Kinley. I just, you know, uh, I just wanted to like grab them and shake them and say, look, we don't worship Dr. Kinley. His name is Yahshua, not Dr. Kinley, you know, but so people are always looking for something to worship, whether it be angels or a man or whatever. Okay. But we're not supposed to worship angels And that angel, you see, which was Gabriel, but by the way, I understand it. He told John to get up. Don't worship me. Only worship Yahweh, you see. And so, you know, if, if the angel told them not to worship angels or, or to worship him, you see, and we're talking one of the archangels too, all right? You see, uh, so, you know, that's not what I'm, that's not, that's not what we should be doing, okay? I, let me put it this way. I would think it, in terms, you see, like, see, see, he wanted John to get up also mm -hmm. because, you see, John was just one of the brethren and that angel was just one of the brethren too. You see, the angelic are our brethren. If, if an angel appears to you and wants you to worship it, I'll tell you what you should do. Get the hell out of there. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's the wrong, that's the wrong kind of angel. That's the wrong mystery. Okay. Now, Yahweh created the angels innumerable. And I was thinking about this. Okay. Um, just from a natural standpoint, um, you know, whenever they talk about the population of the earth, they can't give you a number. They can give you an approximation. But there are so many people on the planet Earth right now that you can't number them all. Okay. It, it's, it, it's, it's, we've, we've come back around, they, they, you see, to, you see, even mankind is innumerable. All right. And this, so it's an example. It's the physical revealing the spiritual. There's nobody on earth that can tell you right now how many people there are on the earth. And in one second, that number changes because so many people are being born and so many people are dying. It's, it's, you see, it's impossible to even tell. So, you see, Yahweh created those angels innumerable. Now, I looked this up and uh, you can look it up. It's, it's, uh, if I look up the word angel in Strong's uh, exhaustive concordance, uh, the number is uh, 4397. And uh, the word angel, the etymology of it is a dispatch, okay, which is like a messenger. It's also a dispatch as a deputy. Now, a deputy is somebody you send to do something, okay? You got the sheriff, okay? All right. You know, I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy, all right? <laughs> the deputy, he's the messenger of the, of the sheriff, if I could put it that way. Um, also in Strong's, it says a messenger of Yahweh. Now I put Yahweh in there, all right? In Strong's, it said a messenger of God. So you have a couple um, things here that, that, that the word angel has in it, okay? So it's a messenger, a deputy. It also means a prophet. It also means priest or teacher. And um, the last definition was ambassador of a king. So these are a lot of things that 
you see, uh, are going on also in the physical creation that we we uh, live in right now. Now, um, uh, does anybody have the Elohim book handy? Yes, I do. Okay, Tara, would you please look um, volume one, uh, page 30, and um, I, I hope I got this right, the second paragraph. Okay. It's in the middle of a train of thought. Now, it, you know, like we always say, read, you know, when you when you go home, if you're if if whatever has gotten into you know strikes you read read what's above it and what's below it get the whole train of thought here but but um go go ahead and, and start about reading. the king where it talks about the vegetable kingdom yes and it starts with the word truly yes yes i have it um uh, underlined here okay truly the vegetable the vegetable kingdom coming forth on the third day typifies the angelic creation Whereas the animal kingdom coming forth later typifies the earthly or physical creation. So, so when he says vegetable kingdom, I, I believe what he really means is the plant kingdom. Okay. Because um, it's not just vegetables. Okay. That he's talking about in this thing. So he, he's saying here that the plant kingdom. Okay. Um, now it's a kingdom that does not, you see, or or the, the 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 plants do not have blood. It's a bloodless creation. See, just as the angelic, okay, um, they're they're spirit beings. They don't have physical blood, okay. So the plant kingdom is 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 like that. So uh, go ahead and start it truly again, please, and I'll I'll let you read that that paragraph and then I'll okay. comment. All right. Uh, truly, the vegetable kingdom coming forth on the third day typifies the angelic creation, whereas the animal kingdom coming forth later typifies the earthly or physical creation. And as an angels are ministering spirits which are incarnated in all mankind and are inseparable from mankind, so much the vegetable and animal kingdoms must be separately related inseparably related yes sorry means... inseparably related <laughs> okay so so you have here where you know uh, the founder is saying that the the animal kingdom okay uh typifies us all right as mankind in the physical bodies and the angels you see they are typified by the the uh plant the plant kingdom Okay, and that they are inseparable. All right. Now uh, uh, it, he explains how that they're inseparable. Um, go ahead. The plants exist on the carbon dioxide excreted by animals, and the animals exist on the oxygen liberated from the plants. But both vegetable and animal life are dependent upon the sun, or S U N sun which is the source of all life. <laughs> so the plants need carbon dioxide. They need something from the animals. And the animals need the oxygen uh, liberated from the plants, okay? And uh, you see, uh, we're, we're getting to a point now in time where uh, the, the earth is being so polluted, uh, you know, that... Uh, the, the, the that we're we're pretty soon you know we're 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 going to be running low on oxygen at the rate that mankind is going and nobody's stopping anything i mean the the oil companies are uh, you know look I, my car has a gasoline engine in it okay now they have the technology um to make everything electric if they wanted all right but it it just it's it's just not profitable okay but anyways, my point, the point of this is you have what's called a symbiotic relationship. Okay, now uh, read also in the Elohim book, volume one, page 28. Okay, uh, uh, try, try to find where it starts as, as saying that science teaches. Okay. 
see. Science recognizes do, 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 do. the science disputation. Page 28. Okay, I found it. Okay. Uh, this is B um, at the bottom. Science teaches that plant and animal life exists in a symbiotic relationship where one cannot thrive without the other. So one cannot thrive with the without the other. Now, so to put that in 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 plain terms, then you see, since he's talking about an example in the physical creation, showing forth the spiritual principle. The spiritual principle is, is that the angelic and the uh, the physical sons of Yahweh, that we we are operating in Yahweh's purpose in a symbiotic relationship, okay? Now, like I said, plant life is life without blood. So there, there's no blood in the angelic, all right? Uh, a symbiotic relationship um, uh, exists uh, where you have uh, non-plant life releases carbon dioxide, and then the plants take up the carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Now, in order for any of this to happen, like it mentioned in the in the first quote there, you got to have the sun. And I've been uh, I've been working with photosynthesis lately a little bit. All right, and and how that really you can work with the principle that um, you see the the energy that's released from the sun in photons, it's basically converted into into life um and that that life is then uh see we're not only uh 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 need the plants for car for for oxygen which is something we really need but we're also need need the plants for our sustenance or our food um now now i uh eat mostly uh mostly meat I'm on a keto kind of diet. Okay, so you can say, well, see, um, you know, that, that you're not dependent on the plants. Well, I am dependent on the plants for oxygen. But those animals, you see, the way you go down the food chain, uh, those, the, 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 the pork chops I had, okay, those pigs, all right, they ate vegetables, okay? They you see the, the if you had a steak tonight that cow ate grass okay um you know that that the animals uh many of the animals okay rely on plant life it's it's it, i mean when you boil it down to it you see we're not only uh uh need plant life for oxygen we also need plant life for our sustenance or for our food okay so, and, and the plants require, you see, our carbon dioxide. Also, the plants require uh, fertilizer from the animals, okay? And, and I'm not just talking about, you know, uh, big animals. I'm talking about, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, worms and bugs and, you know, those are, those are considered animals also, okay? And so you have the symbiotic relationship going on, all right? So plant life is life without blood, and there's no blood in the angelic. There's, there's a symbiotic relationship uh, with uh, non-plant life, with, with the CO2, and the plants take up the CO2 and release oxygen, all right? Now, um, okay, well, I had another thing about uh, something I got into at, at unit at, at uh, Chicago a couple of years ago, but you know, it's, it's also interesting how that the plants also communicate with one another and that the, the trees, especially, and, and how that the trees, you see, they communicate with one another under it's, it's under the ground. It can't be seen the communication that's going on. And when they, when they brought it to the surface, they found these rhizomes, which are uh, root-like things, but very fine, and that they they give off light. And the, the the trees, you see, you can see are like you see that 
you know, men walk as trees, but also you have, you see, angels are like unto trees also. All right. Now, so symbiosis, okay. Uh, uh, the word symbi sim symbiosis uh, literally means living together. Um, now, uh, uh, you can have uh, different types of symbiosis. There's a conjunctive symbiosis, which means that you live together in a single body. So um, you, I mean, give you an example, okay? Um, in your intestines, you have bacteria, all right? Without that bacteria, um, you can't function. You have to have, you see, th they're finding that many diseases are caused by, you see, by this, uh, uh, by a lack of the right kind of bacteria, okay, in your intestines, okay? They produce nutrients that we need and they aid in digestion, okay? And so, so you have, you know, the, 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 the bacteria are more similar you see, are, 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 are somewhat similar to, to the plant kingdom, okay? Now, there's there's three types of symbiosis, right? Okay, everything goes in threes. Um, there's mutualistic, and that's where uh, you have uh, uh, a relationship, a, a symbiotic relationship where, you know, like the plants in, 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 in the animals, where one is is giving off carbon dioxide, the other is giving off oxygen, you see? So, so that's a mutualistic uh, relationship. There's also uh, what I call commensal or commensalistic. Um, that's when one, one uh, uh, kind of creature uh, lives off another, but doesn't cause any, any kind of um, uh, damage, okay? It doesn't hurt the creature, it doesn't, draw energy from it or anything like that. So there's there there's there's that kind of and then there's parasitic, okay, which is when uh one creature basically uh derives you see its its nutrients uh from another animal. For example, a parasite would be like a, a mosquito. All right. It it takes your blood. It does not give you anything useful in return. As a matter of fact that's it's one of the, it's, uh, 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 I read this in an article that the most deadly creature on the earth is the mosquito. And that's because uh, it's a vector for uh, passing disease like malaria and uh, den dengue fever and all the, all the major plagues that are in the earth. Okay. And, uh, you know, we had a, we had a, well, I don't want, I don't want to get off the train of thought. Okay. Because there's there's a lot more on that. Okay, so but the 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 type of symbiosis that um, we're talking about as far as the angelic and with human beings, you see, in physical bodies, is definitely a mutualistic, where just like the plants and the animals, the carbon dioxide and the oxygen, that this is a mutualistic relationship. All right, so. Um, if it's symbiotic, all right, in, uh, you know, if it's a symbiotic relationship between angels and, and, and really, you know, I don't want to say human beings, you know, I, I really want to say uh, those that have, you know, that have been blessed with the Holy Spirit and with the knowledge and understanding of Yahweh, that, you know, this is, this is the relationship with the angelic that more specifically that I'm that I'm talking about. Now I want to run this down through the book a little bit. Okay. So uh, a what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you um let's see I'm going to give you uh, six different things that angels did down through the law and the prophets for you see the children of Yahweh. Um, and in, in in other cases, against that mystery of iniquity. All right. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Okay. Now, um, Dr. Kinley uh, referred to the angelic also as ministering spirits. 
Now get for me Gen Genesis uh, 28 and 12. All right. And um, uh, uh, I want someone else. Okay, so so Tara, give me that. Um, uh, Lisa, would you give me Hebrews 1 and 13 and 14? And um, uh, Pam, would you get me Hebrews, or Carol, would you get me Hebrews 12, verses 18 through 23? And um, uh, Pam, would you get me 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, and 9? Now, see, before I, I can bring this stuff out, I felt I had to have a plethora of witnesses. So we're going to read a lot of scriptures. Okay. I hope you guys don't mind. Okay. So Not at all. read Genesis uh, for me, please, first. Okay. 28 and 12. This is out of the King James. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, the angel of Elohim ascended and descended on it. So and behold, my, that that's good. So here you have now. Um, I always thought this was interesting. Okay, and when I first read this, I was thinking, "What are the angels doing?" You see, they're they're basically. You see, this is, you know, the 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 symbolism, if I can put it that way, is is that they are coming down. You see, they're going through the veil, if I can put it that way, and coming down into the physical creation. Um, and that they're doing stuff here, <laughs> okay? They're, mm -hmm. they're involved in Yahweh's purpose. Now, Dr. Kinley said that they were ministering spirits, okay? Now, um, you know, so, so they're doing something, all right? Now, uh, then you read that, that Jacob wrestled with the angel, okay? And but that angel wasn't just any angel. That was the angel of Yahweh, okay. And because uh, then, then Jacob's name was changed to to Israel, okay. Um, uh, th that Genesis scripture was twenty eight and twelve. All right. Yes. Yeah. So, so here, here I'm just, I'm just, I'm bringing this out to show you that they're in this creation, okay. Um, the ladder is a metaphor, you know, it's, it's not like they're climbing up and it's not like there's an escalator. Okay. I've seen that, saw that in a movie one time, a guy was dying. He got on an escalator that was taking them up into the clouds. No, that's not it. The angelic creation, you see, they're ministering spirits. All right. So they're doing some ministering and they're coming down into this creation. All right. You see, and they're, they're doing stuff. Okay. And it's a symbiotic relationship, okay? And the relation that, there's that relationship, you see, with those that have the knowledge that have been blessed with the Holy Spirit. And you know, Dr. Kinley said, "Well, you know, you look at this room and you say you see empty chairs." He said, "There's no empty chairs, okay? That you see when you go to class. Now, there's been times where I went to class." You see, especially when we first started having class here in Tampa and um, uh, the baby was sick. So my wife had to stay home uh, with the baby. Um, uh, the new people we had come into class, they, 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 did, they didn't come uh, for whatever reason. And, um, and uh, uh, Jennifer and Chuck, I don't think, had moved to, to, uh, to Tampa at that point. So you'd say I showed up, rolled down the charts, okay, and nobody showed up. No, no, the the, the house was full, okay. <laughs> it was full of the angels, all right. And I'm gonna sh show you some proof for that in a, in a little while, okay. Um, so so here you have them coming down into this physical creation. They're not, I just wanted to bring out that simple point because, um, you know, people, you see, and, and, you know, we carry things over. Even, I don't care how long you've been in class. You've got a theory, concept, and opinion that you got out there in the world or in church or whatever. You, you probably got one or two and I'm being kind. Okay. And I'm talking about myself too. You see ideas and stuff like that. Okay. But 
this is just showing you a witness that those angels are operating in the creation here now, right now. They're right here, okay, in this creation. And um, Dr. Kinley said that they were ministering spirits. So that kind of gives you an idea of what they were doing, okay? Now, um, it's interesting. I always thought it was interesting that we, we know who Joshua, the son of Nun, was. Okay, hold on one second here. I had to get a sip of something. Okay. Um, it's coffee. It's not nothing interesting. All right. <laughs> um, so, you see, uh, so I always thought it was interesting that Joshua, okay, was called a minister to uh to um to moses that he was moses's minister but we know who yashua was right that that was yashua himself that what you see joshua the son of nun was yashua we know that for a fact now 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 if if, if that hasn't been proven to you 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 let me know and and uh I'll, I'll i'll show you how that how that works okay it's one of my favorite trains of thought all right but he was he was manifesting as a minister, okay. And you see, um, in in other places in the book, you can find where Yahshua is referred to as the angel of Yahweh, okay. And um, you know, so so he can he he came down into a physical body. He manifested in the angelic, you see, and he's also you see you have you know, you know, him in, in pure spirit. Okay. Yahweh Elohim, you see, would be likened to that angel of Yahweh. Okay. At least that's the way that I see it. Okay. And and if, if you got uh you know a better idea on it, I'm all ears. All right. Now I'm just throwing stuff out for you guys. All right. Now the thing that's interesting too is how that um you know uh when you think of Joshua was Moses's minister. Okay, um, you were you would think, you see, uh, at least people out here in the world. Well, he's just Moses's minister, thinking that you know Moses was in charge, and Joshua was just his minister. But the world always has everything backwards now, don't they? Okay, the minister is the one that takes care of you, not. The minister, you see, taking care of, you see, or, or being taken care of by Moses, you see. Um, so, so, so a ministering spirit is one that takes care of you. Okay. Uh, read Hebrews for me, please. We're in Hebrews, the first chapter. Did you want that first? Yes. Thir okay. 13. He yep. Hebrews 1 and 13. Uh -huh. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit. You want me to pick it up, or okay? Um, yeah, you can pick it up if you want. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just going to start at ten. And thou, Yahweh, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they sh all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? See, he's, he's kind of showing that the angels, you know, the way he's, the, the way he's saying that is that, that the angelic, you see, are are not sitting at his right hand, okay? But they are ministering spirits. That they are, you see, doing the work, you see, doing work for Yahshua, okay? Mm -hmm. Not the other way around. So mm -hmm. here it says flat out that they are ministering spirits, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, skip down, or, or uh, who's got Hebrews twelve and eighteen as a character? I do, I do. Okay, okay. twelve and eighteen. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, 
See, and that's the, that's talking about Mount Sinai. You see, they couldn't touch that mountain, and they be kept. You see, uh, uh, they be see. Uh, it, it said that they be uh, oh, what's, what's the word like stone with the darts. They no with that, darts. That, yeah, they they would be uh, uh, cast through Earth with or, darts or punctured with a, a, thrust a dart. Through thrust with, with a dart. dart. Oh, thrust okay. through with a dart. Thrust through, that's the word, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't, couldn't think of the word. Thrust through with a dart, okay. So that's not the mountain he's talking about, all right, which is what would happen back there with Mount Sinai. Okay, go ahead, Carol. In the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the words should not be spoken to them anymore. See, when Yahweh spoke down from that mountain, okay, <laughs> I remember... When I was a kid, I would I would go to uh, rock concerts, okay, and we tried to get as close as we could to the speakers, and I swear that's why I'm hard of hearing to this day. All right, uh, but that it it would just you could just feel the vibration. It was so loud that would be nothing compared to the voice of Yahweh. But anyways, so so that's not where that's that's so so start over with that. All right, Carol, please. For they could not endure that which was commanded. So they couldn't endure with that which was commanded. Go ahead. And if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned and thrust through with a dart. Uh huh. And so formidable was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Okay. Now, did you get where there was an innumerable company? That's 23. So Okay. I, so keep going. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. So we are come to Mount Zion, spiritual Mount Zion. Okay. In, in that there is present, you see, an innumerable company of angels. Okay. Down here now. All right. When you go to class, like I said, you know, Dr. Kinley said the room was full. That, you see, it's right in your scriptures. It's right here in Hebrews. What he said was true. Okay, now uh, who's got Thessalonians? Sam. Yeah, so I have First Thessalonians five and six. Six Is that nine. correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For Yahweh hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Okay. So, so um, you know, the, 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 po the point is, you see, uh, that I wanted to bring up with, with this is that we're not appointed unto wrath, but... Um, um, you know, you write down notes and you think, I'll remember what my point was on that. And I just, I just can't right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyways, so, uh, the, the, the point of this, this is like, okay, what, what, what it's a symbiotic relationship. Okay. What do we get out of it? Okay. With the angelic, the angelic are ministering spirits. And they ministered to Jacob. They ministered to Moses. That you see, you, that those ministering spirits, uh, you see, were operating all the way down through the law and the prophets, and they're operating now in this creation. You see, and that there's an innumerable company of them. In fact, all right. So there's one job of an angel is to be a ministering spirit. All right. Now, get for me, please, um, uh, Job. The first chapter, and uh, uh, pick it up at, at verse ten. Job one and ten. Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house? Uh, pick, about pick pick it up a couple verses. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. 
So he's just wandering around the earth. See, just looking for trouble. All right. Go ahead. Uh, and Yahweh said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that mm -hmm. there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth Elohim and escheweth evil. And escheweth evil. Okay, that doesn't like evil. Okay, so Job's, Job's, see, Yahweh points him out and said, see, there's nobody like Job. Okay, wow. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not that's not good for Job, okay, to point out to Satan how great Job was, all right? But go ahead. And Satan answered Yahweh and said, Doth Job fear Elohim for not? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. Now, that's good. Uh, that's good. Now, see, he, he says he put a hedge about Job about his house you see he put a, he put a hedge about everything and i was i was thinking what kind of hedge okay because when we think of a hedge we think of a plant okay what kind of hedge is going to keep out that satanic spirit okay you see <laughs> so that's my question all right what kind of hedge or what kind of barrier now you know it can't be physical cuz uh you see S satan you know, uh, you know, is 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 an angel too? All right, and um, you know, so so you had you have where he is manifested in this physical creation, and he's not he's not constrained to a physical body. He can take off one body and put on another one. You see, and so so my quest, I I had it when I I remember reading this and thinking, well, he's not talking about foliage. All right, he's not talking about plants. All right, with this hedge. But there's something that was keeping that mystery of iniquity, uh, some sort of barrier, if I could put it that way. That, you know, I mean, like, uh, you know, like uh, the first thing that came to mind, which was wrong, um, was it was like a, a maybe a force field like Star Trek or something like that. OK, <laughs> you know, and so but you look up the word uh, hedge in Strong's, which is 7753. And it means a formation, protection, or restraint. So something was protecting Job, all right, and was restraining that mystery of iniquity, all right. Now, uh, uh, get for me, okay, uh, um, uh, Tar. You get me. I, I got a bunch here, all right. Tar, would you give me Psalms forty-three and seven? Um, uh, uh, Chuck, would you get me Psalms 91 verses 9 through 11? Pam, yeah. would you get me Genesis 3 and 24? Okay, um, and you said 43 and 7? 43 and 7, right. Okay. Um, uh, Carol, yeah. would you get me Psalms 105 verses 12 through 15? We'll just do those so far. Okay. It goes to five. Mine's Psalms forty-three up to five. Okay, go up to start at five then, please. Okay, Psalms forty-three and five. And this is uh, the I don't know. Let's go to the last one. <laughs> why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in Elohim, for I shall yet praise Him. Who is the health of my countenance and my Elohim? I don't know if that's what you wanted. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, let me see. Um, there is the seven. Did you read seven? No, there isn't a seven. It only goes to five. Oh, okay. Um, let me look it up. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe five and forty. Maybe you got it backwards, or uh, you could try that. Um, so let 
So that doesn't go up to four. What were you looking for? What words were you looking for? Um, where David says that Yahweh has encamped his angels about him. Okay, let's go to the next one. Psalms 91, 7 through 11, or 9 through 11. Okay, Psalms 91, 9 through 11. Right. Because thou hast made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling. For he hath given for he shall give his angels charge over thee and keep thee in thy ways. So remember, we were talking about a hedge or a barrier. And here it's saying that he he is he his angels are about thee and they are 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 charged to protect you. Okay. You see, or at least you see, and now David is speaking this stuff through the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, now read for me Genesis uh, 3 and 24. Okay, sorry about that. I had a mute and I couldn't find it. Genesis 3 and 24. Okay, I'll pick it up one. Therefore Yahweh Elohim sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So you have another hedge here, the principle of a hedge. So he's he's charged his angels to protect, okay, in, in, in Psalms there. Um, and that, I have, uh, sorry? I have it. Oh, you have it? Okay. It's Psalms 34 and 7. Okay. And the angel of Yahweh encamped around about them that fear him and delivered them. Okay. So the angels of Yahweh are encamped around, you see, his 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 peeps. Okay. <laughs> you know, they they're charged to protect. All right. That it the angel, you see, see that hedge around Job. Okay, now I'm just throwing this out. You can buy it or not. The only thing I can see a witness for is that it, it was angels that were sent there to protect him. Okay, now I'm not done. Okay, uh, uh, who, keep reading. The, uh, who, who has Psalms? Uh, does someone have Psalms 105? I do. Okay. Uh, I think I'll start at 11. Saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance? When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. You see, touch not mine anointed. Now, what's going to keep keep that mystery of iniquity from touching the anointed? Okay, but that that hedge okay now we read in the scripture reading that when daniel was cast into the lion's den that yahweh sent his angels to protect him from the lions okay now um uh, uh let's let's run a couple more scriptures kathy would you get me second kings uh uh the sixth chapter and start at 16 and I don't know how far to go on that. Um, uh, uh, Tara, would you give me Genesis 24, verses 7 and 40? Um, Carol, would you give me Genesis 48, 13 through 16? Okay, go ahead, Kathy. I had to unmute myself. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. um, Second Kings 6, 16, I'm going to start at. And he answered, fear not, for they that be with thee, with us are more than they that be with them. 
And Elijah prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Freaking awesome. I, th I wonder if, I, I, I sure hope that there's like a mountain of chariots or, uh, of fire around me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> and, and, and that was that, see, I mean, Again, that's quite that's quite the barrier. That's quite the hedge. You're not gonna, you you know. I don't care if you got nuclear submarines. You say it ain't gonna work. Okay. You want eighteen too? Please. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto Yahweh and said, "Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness." And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. So he smote them with blindness. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's get Genesis 24, please. 24, and you said 7 and 40? Yeah. Okay. And Yahweh of uh, and Yahweh of heaven. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm reading out of the King James. The Elohim of heaven, which took me from thy father's, from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me. And that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my sons from hence. So he sent an angel before him to, to guide him in the way and to protect him. Okay, now read verse 40, please. And he said unto me, Thy Elohim before whom I walk will send his angel with thee. And prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for thy son of my kindred and of my father's house. So so we got this thing going on here. We got angels with David protecting him. We got an angel protecting the tree of life. Uh, we got uh, in Psalms, touch not the anointed. We have Daniel being protected by the angels. We have Elijah and Elishua being protected by a mountain full of angels. Okay, you have an angel being with, with Isaac. Okay, in Genesis 48, 13 through 16, you have an angel with Joshua, or with Joseph, I'm sorry. That, that you see, I mean, Joseph Joseph had a lot of help when he was down there in Egypt. Okay, that, that those angels, those ministering spirits going up and down that ladder from heaven, you see, are ministering spirits and that they they are you see providing a barrier or a hedge or a protection for the children of Yahweh okay now uh read Exodus 14 verses 19 through 20 um uh uh Tara if you would get that Carol would you get me Matthew 18 6 through 10 um Pam would you get me Acts 12 and 5 and and that's that's good. Exodus nineteen. No, hold on. Four, Exodus fourteen, 14. 14 and nineteen. Yeah. And the angel of Yahweh, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went before, went from before their faces and stood behind them. So and here you came, have the angel of Yahweh standing in between Israel and the Egyptians, forming a barrier, you see, that they, they, they couldn't get to them, okay? That, that angel of Yahweh, okay? Did you read through 20? No. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these. So that the one came not near the other all the night. Now, that's when it says the neat. angel of Yahweh, that that's Yahshua, okay? And he, it, see, it's it's. Let me put it this way: He put on his angel suit, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he is he's he's doing what angels do, okay? That he is providing that hedge or barrier between mm -hmm. the mystery of iniquity and the mystery of righteousness. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, uh, Matthew 18. 
All right, I'm going to pick it up a little. And okay. it said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is Yahshua talking. Okay, now go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And who shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot, foot offend thee, cut them off, cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Okay, that that's that's good. Uh, well, the angel part is on 10. Okay. All right, read 10 then, uh, please. 10 is, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're making intercession too. Okay. All right. Acts 12 and 5. Mm -hmm. Acts 12 and 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Okay. I just had to make sure <laughs> I wasn't muted. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto Yahweh for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of Yahweh came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he, so you, and, you see here yeah. that that angel rescued Peter. Okay. So so you have that, that you know, that, that, uh, that idea as far as the angels are encamped, encamped around the, the, you know, the righteous, that they're charged to protect, that they, that they're, they're to prevent that mystery of iniquity from touching the anointed. And see, so Daniel in the lion's den, uh, Elijah, with Isaac, and Joseph came between Israel and the Egyptians, okay, uh, delivered Peter from prison, okay, uh, de delivered Daniel from the lion's den, all right, and then you go into the tabernacle. And you have where the angels, okay, they the angels aren't on the floor, all right? They're not on the ceiling. They're on the veils, you see? Or in other words, you see, that they're, they're, it's, a, it's a hedge or a barrier, okay? You see, but it's the principle of it, not that those figurines were doing anything, okay? To, you know, uh, but but you have, as, as far as from a, from a, natural standpoint or whatever but you have the angels on the veils and then it was also an angel that closed the door of the ark and really you see when i think about that too that um you know someone was working with this recently about you know all that time that um it took noah to build that ark and you know they, they were talking about how that probably at first he had a lot of he, he had a big following. And I guess Dr. Kinley actually ha has said that, that he had a big following. And, but it took, what, 120 years to make that arc? And probably by that time, you see, they all thought he was nuts. No rain had come, all right? And, but then that angel of Yahweh closed that arc. And, the, and, and you, there was no way you were going to get in to that arc once that angel had closed it. So, okay. So, so we have angels are ministering spirits and um, they are, uh, uh, they, 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 they can form a hedge or a barrier to protect the righteous. All right. And um, 
uh, now I'm going to get to to another thing um, as far as uh, a purpose of, of the angelic. OK, um, but what I want to do is I want to give you a, a, a natural example in this. OK, so we have um, in the human body. OK, in your brain, you have cells that are very peculiar. OK, they're called astrocytes. And it, that word literally means uh, star cells. Now, in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, the angels uh, are referred to as the stars of heaven. You, you guys should, should probably, probably already know that. OK, but that's in Isaiah, the 14th chapter. And um, also in Revelation, the 12th chapter, the angelic are referred to as the stars of heaven. All right. And so um, these astrocytes, all right, um, they, that the, the, it's interesting, um, they, they vastly outnumber the neurons. Now the neurons are the gray matter in your brain. All right. And uh, the neurons are where you, uh, where, where you have memories, where you um, perceive uh, the creation around you, okay? Um, all, the, all the stuff that interacts with the physical body is done through neurons, moving your muscles, uh, running, uh, your, your hearing, everything that is involved with the physical creation is done by neurons okay and that's like i said the gray matter of the brain okay now astrocytes they for 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 really decades maybe even the last century or so okay they didn't know what astrocytes did now they're now again like i said that the uh, uh angels are referred to as the stars of heaven and astrocytes um, are an example in the physical creation because what they do is is they first of all they vastly outnumber the neurons like i said you know you have an innumerable company of angels they're the most numerous cell in the brain all right now they're in the most holy place or in your head all right and they form a hedge or a protection okay um, now, this is a quote from an article in Scientific American. This is what I was reading when I was talking about it at the beginning about uh, Chuck and uh, Dave Willikit were scuba diving, and I was sitting in the in the car waiting for them reading. I was reading this article on astrocytes, and and then just like all the stuff on the angelic, just you know, just popped in my head. All right, and how this thing works, and and so. Um, so this is a quote from the Scientific American article. It is thought that astrocytes form tight junctions and enzymes. Now, the word enzyme means leaven, all right? So, so it's a, a type of resurrection that are characterized, uh, that are characteristic of the blood to brain barrier. They are the immune system in the brain. Astrocytes surround the brain membranes called they're called the min minges um astrocytes also um uh uh are referred to there's a type of astrocyte called astroglia and the word glia means glue there are a class of neural cells um that provide for defense of the central nervous system okay this is from an article uh, in, um, uh, uh, I can give you the reference, but it's uh, from 2017. So you have an example. Okay, now if you, like I said, if you look at the neurons as those, they're, they're, they're in the cloud, or they're operating the physical body. And then these astrocytes, they protect and they form a hedge around the neurons. So that, and they prevent you from getting infections and stuff like that, you see? I mean, 
Uh, now people do get meningitis and stuff like that. Okay, but it's it's pretty rare because you're exposed to those bacteria all the time. Why aren't they in your head? It's because these astrocytes or these star cells are, are, are forming that veil. Now, what was interesting to me is that when they look at astrocytes, the way that they you see, in order to see a particular cell type, you use what's, what's called a stain, okay? The, uh, they, they have all different types of stains. Um, uh, the stuff I was using, I was actually using um, antibodies that had fluorescent tags on them, okay? But what they use to stain astrocytes is gold. They use a gold stain. And those angels on the veils of the tabernacle were made of gold. So you, you have, you know, that, that principle of them being, uh, you know, like likened to, you know, the, the angels in the tabernacle. And also that they're forming that, that protection, protection in that hedge. Okay. Now, so we got, we got two two things so far. Okay. Angels are ministering spirits. Angels form a hedge or a barrier to keep out that mystery of iniquity. All right. Now, uh, get me, um, let's see. Uh, it's nice having these names up here. Chuck, would you please get me second Thessalonians, the first verse verses five through 10. Um, Jennifer, would you get me Matthew 13, 36 through 43? Uh, Kathy, would you get me Genesis 19, 12 through 13? And Pam, would you get me 2 Samuel uh, uh, chapter 24, verses uh, 16 through 17? Okay, whoever's got uh, Thessalonians, please. Yeah, I got Thessalonians. What was that? Thessalonians, what? One, what? Uh, Second Thessalonians, one, uh, five through 10. Okay. Second Thessalonians, one, five through 10, which is a manifest token of the righteousness judgment of Elohim, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of Elohim, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Elohim to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when Yahshua, the Messiah, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Taking flaming fire, right? Taking flaming vengeance flaming on them vengeance. that know not Elohim and obey not the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. So here's your Michael and Gabriel. Okay. Michael, okay, was the warrior. So here you have angels uh taking vengeance. Okay. Now uh read for me, Matthew, please. Uh Kathy. Or Jennifer. I'm sorry, Jennifer. Matthew 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 13, 36. Yeah, through 43. Okay, 36. Then Yahshua sent the multitudes away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the top tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the work world. The good man, I'm sorry, I'm having a trouble seeing in this light. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked ones. Mm -hmm. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so is it in the end of this world. So the angels are gathering the righteous and are also taking the tares and casting them into the fire. So you have, again, an example of those, the angelic being warriors. Okay. All right. Um, Kathy, do you have uh, 
Genesis? Genesis 19. I'm going to pick it up at 1 and then skip down okay. to 12, okay? And there okay. came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Now I'm going to skip to 12. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and who's, whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of Yahweh, and Yahweh has sent us to destroy it. So, so here's those angels, definitely. Uh, they they opened up a can of whoop ass, okay? <laughs> <To Sodom. laughs> oh, okay, Pam, do you have the next one? Yep, Second Samuel 24 and 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, Yahweh repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough, stay now thine hand. And the angel of Yahweh was by the threshing place of Arana the Jebusite. And David spake unto Yahweh when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against the, my father's house. So then the angel stayed his hand. Okay, that was one sweep of his sword and he killed 60,000. Okay. That, that, that's a heck of a warrior. All right. So we have a warrior. Now, the physical reveals the spiritual. Astrocytes transform. So these astrocytes or these star cells, okay, in the cloud or in the brain, they're likened to the angelic, they're gold, okay, that astrocytes transform into immune cells that fight infection. Now, this is a quote from the, from the article. Indeed, it now seems that astrocytes are important for the immune response in the brain. Okay, so they're, they're, they're warriors. Okay, so you got an example in the physical. All right, got, all right, now, uh, messenger. Um, see, uh, uh, see, Carol, would you get me Judges 13, three through five, all right. Um, Chuck, would you get me Matthew uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 21? Okay. And um, yeah, that's I, I'm going to run out of time. Let's just get those two, and then I'll give you some other examples. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua. Or he shall save his people from their sins. Now that's the messenger. That's Gabriel speaking unto to Mary. Okay, so angels are acting as messengers. Okay, uh, so who has uh, judges? Judges 13, 3 through 5, 3. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For so, here, thou... so here's an angel coming to Samson's mother and telling her that she's going to have a son. Okay? It, you see, and, and, and you, you have other examples of that. Okay? The, an angel came to, to Mary angel came to Moses to give him a message that the angel of Yahweh appeared to Abraham and spoke to him, came to Sarah and spoke to her, came to Hagar and spoke to her, came to Gideon and spoke to him, came to Balaam and spoke to him. You see, uh, well, actually, the, the ass talked to him first. <laughs> okay. And, you, and there's another example of a of a barrier too. Balaam was not going to be able to go and, and curse them. Um, the angel of Yahweh appeared to Manoah and also appeared unto Samuel. All right. So you have a messenger. So in the physical, the 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 physical reveals the spiritual. So the astrocytes 
communicate with neurons. Now we're like the neurons. Astrocytes are the angelic. And they, they do this by the release of neurotransmitters. And the astrocytes promote um, uh, connections called synapses between uh, uh, the, the, the brain cells. And they, they help induce memory, okay? And so they're, 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 they increase that, that messenger system that's going on in the brain. All right. Now, um, let me see. Uh, Pam, would you get me Genesis uh, 24, verse 7 and verse 40? Tara, would you get me Exodus um, chapter 23 and then verses 20 through 23? Okay. Genesis 24 and 7. And okay. verse 40. Okay. Yahweh Elohim of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. Okay, and then 40. Okay. Okay. And he said unto me, Yahweh, before whom I walk, will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this oath when thou comest to my kindred. And if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. Okay. Now I'm just picking up the principle that Yahweh sent an angel to guide those people okay so this is another principle so you have a guide all right now uh, uh read, read for me exodus please 23 and 20 yeah and 20 through 23 20 through 23 uh-huh behold i send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee unto the place which i have prepared beware of him and obey his voice Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Now, but if, go ahead, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Um, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and now we'll cut them off. Okay. So really that angel was Joshua, the son of Nun. Okay. But he was acting as a guide that they, 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 that he led them out of Egypt, you see, into the wilderness and then into Canaan's land. All right. Now, it's interesting that in the developing brain, okay, so here's our physical example in the creation, those astrocyte cells act as a scaffold, enabling the neurons. Now, this is a quote, all right? This is all a quote. The, astro, the astro, astrocytes, okay, they're also called astroglial cells because they're glial means glue. They're part of the glue that holds the whole brain together. See, the angelic is part of that glue that holds Yahweh's purpose together, okay? That these cells act as a scaffold, enabling neurons, see, we're the neurons, to migrate from their point of origin in the developing neuronal system to their final destination in the maturing brain. Or in other words, just like that angel of Yahweh led the children of Israel, from their place of origin, like it says here, that these cells do it from their place of origin, which was Egypt, okay, to their final destination in the maturing brain or to Canaan's land. So these cells act as a guide, you see, just as the angels, you see, do do with Yahweh. Now, let's see, uh, uh, um, Pam, would you get me First Kings 19 and 3? And Tara, would you get me Matthew 4 and 11? 
Okay, first Kings nineteen and three. Okay, nineteen and three. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. Okay, I might need to pick this up. <laughs> okay, yeah, pick it up a little bit. This is Elijah. Okay. Okay, 19 and 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and without how he had slain all the, the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Okay, is that what you wanted? Um, no, I went with Elijah when he's in the wilderness and, and was famished. Oh, that's four. But he, okay. 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 But he went himself a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, O Yahweh, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Mm -hmm. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at, the, at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of Yahweh came again the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights into, into Horeb, the Mount of Yahweh. He, uh, Jezebel wanted his blood. He got water, okay? And he, on the strength of that, the water and the bread, he was, went 40 days. So he got blood, water, spirit, because it, it was an angel, a spirit, 40, okay, with Elijah. But the principle here is that angel was sent to restore or strengthen Elijah, okay? Now, get for me, please, uh, Matthew 4 and 11. Matthew 4 and 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now, see, this is, this is, you know, kind of a fulfillment of Elijah, where Joshua had been tempted of the devil for 40 days. Okay, so you have, you see, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and he had, you know, as far as I know, he had no food or water. Okay, and, and so uh, uh, th this, did, did you, I'm sorry, read it again for me, please, 4 and 11. You probably should have picked it up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to pick it up a couple of verses? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to be pithy, but it's it's not about, working out. What about six? Okay, six sounds good. And saith unto him, if thou be the son of Yahweh, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Oh, and in their bands, they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou dash thy foot against thy stone. Yahshua said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. Again, the devil taketh him up unto an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Mm -hmm. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Yahshua say, then saith Yahshua unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So they ministered unto him. And they they restored him and strengthened him. Okay, uh, so uh, so we have an example back there with Elijah. We have it with with Joshua. You also have it. You see with the children of Israel with that manna. Okay, but uh, in the, in then the, the example in the physical creation is that these astrocytes. You see they they serve to maintain a proper environment for the neurons. They have a restorative role. See, 
didn't that angel restore Elijah and the angels were sent to see in a restorative role to Yahshua? Astrocytes can release a number of growth factors for neurons. Some of these, such as nerve growth factor, may stimulate the neurons, see where are those neurons again, as a whole, as well as promoting axonal growth, okay? Um, also, astrocytes provide a buffer around the neurons, okay? So, so I, I hope I gave you a, a little bit on this. Um, so, so here, basically, you know, based on um, what I got in the scriptures and examples in the physical creation, okay, first thing we knew, we already knew that angels were ministering spirits, okay, but that, that they are, uh, they, they um, you see, in Yahweh's purpose, they're, they're ministering spirits. In Yahweh's purpose, they are a hedge or a barrier, okay, um, in, in, uh, you also have, and this is, I'm sure something people already knew anyways, that uh, the angels are warriors, okay? That they take flaming vengeance on those that know not Yahweh, okay? Um, and and again, the astrocytes are, are an example with that, with the immune cells that fight infection, okay? They form a hedge, the astrocytes do, and a barrier. They, they minister to the neurons, all right? And the fourth thing is you, the messengers, where angels are messengers. The astrocytes operate, you see, uh, uh, as messengers. Um, the angels guided people down through the long prophets, you see. Uh, Isaac and, and Jacob uh, were, were guided by the angels. We had that read, okay? And then uh, the astrocytes, or the ast the, the, they, they act as, they, they basically um uh, uh lead the neurons in their migration and i just love that that we call it the migration coming up out of egypt into the wilderness and then into canaan's land okay um the angels also so they're guides they're messengers they're ministering spirits they're a hedge they're warriors and then uh, uh finally they restore or strengthen or quicken you see, like Elijah and, and like you have with, with Yahshua, okay? So it's a symbiotic relationship, right? So my next question is, is if it's a symbiotic relationship, then what the heck did the angels get out of it? All right? <laughs> Remember we read from the textbook that the angelic and, uh, you see, those that, have the Holy Spirit in a physical body, you see, the you see that that uh they uh, uh have a symbiotic relationship. One cannot thrive without the other. And we can see where the angelic, you see, took care of Yahweh's people all the way down through the law and the prophets in, in many ways. All right. So what do the angels get out of it? Okay. First of all, um, uh, get get for me um, uh, First Peter, uh, chapter one. Uh, uh, Carol, would you get this for me? And it started verse ten, uh, ten through twelve. And then uh, 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 Jennifer, would you get me Revelation, verse eight, uh, twenty-two, uh, verses eight through nine. Um, uh, Kathy, would you get for me Hebrews thirteen and two? And Pam, would you get me Hebrews 12 and 23? What was the first one? First, first Peter, Peter 1, 10 through 12. Did I call it right? Yes, you did. Okay. Oh, I'm muted. I'm sorry. I'm reading it and I'm muted. <laughs> 10, of which salvation the prophets had inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of the Messiah, which was in them, did signify 
when it testified beforehand the sufferings of the Messiah and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are yeah, now... See, those, those angels did minister those things. Okay, go ahead. Which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the good news unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. You see, the gospel that we preach, I mean, as hard as it is for me to even conceive, okay, because an angelic creation is far in a, in a way above, you see, um, us. I mean, you know, I, you know, with, with all the physical ailments that I've had, you know, my whole life and, and lately, you know, it's just like th this body seems so frail and weak, you know, and, and it's like, I'm always tired and, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we're, they get, these bodies are getting old and, <laughs> and all of a sudden the guys stop and, and you can't remember things and stuff like that. And, and, and here's Yahweh's purpose to us, uh, as, as lame human beings, okay, that, you know, the, the angels are like, like, you know, they desire, see, you know, when Dr. Kinley said that the class, you know, classrooms are never empty, that there's never empty chairs, the angels desire to hear the gospel of Yahshua and Messiah, which has been given to us. And, you know, that that's that's quite quite an amazing thing that we've been entrusted with and that the angels desire to hear the things that are being preached from the floor when it's done according to the law and the prophets now let me get these next two our next three scriptures okay revelation the verse please revelations what was the verse uh, uh 22, 22 8 and 9 8 9 yeah. Revelation 22. Revelation 22. I'm sorry. If somebody else has it, they say, okay. Revelations 2, 8 and 9. Uh, 22. Revelations 22 okay. and 8. 22. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou doest not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, worship Yahweh. See, there are brethren, those angels, the, the, the angelic creation, there are brethren, okay? There are family, all right? Hebrews 13, 2. Mm. Hebrews 13, 2, uh, 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. See, you never know. <laughs> you never know who you're talking to. Okay, Hebrews 12 and 23, and then we're out of time. Hebrews 12 and 23. Might as well just read it. Okay, oh, yeah. I was I was muted. I was reading it. <laughs> okay, I go got ahead. it. Be ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. See, we are in an innumerable company of angels. And and you know, it it's 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 an amazing thing, you know, but that's uh, that's how Yahweh's work in his purpose. And that it's a symbiotic relationship, you see. And we're not always aware of, of what's going on around us. But you see, I, I do know of incidences too, where people, you know, um, you know, like I, I know of an incident where uh, there was a, a group of, I think four people, and I think Mitch was in, in the car, and they were driving cross country to Los Angeles. Yes. And the, the driver, fell asleep and the car started careening 
out of control. And they all yelled the name of Yahshua. And next thing they knew that they were on the road and that they, they, they were saved. You see? That's right. You see? I mean, you just never know. Okay? Now, <laughs> I, I remember one time now, 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 well, I don't want to give my own example. But you see, just because we're not constantly aware of them, okay, okay, time is up, doesn't mean that, you see, uh, they're not working in Yahweh's purpose, because they're here, they're they're right here now with you, okay, and you got witnesses of what they do down through the line of prophets. I hope that made some sense to you, it, you know, when you, you see a thing and you want to explain it, and, and you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to just spit the words out and so i apologize if, if i confused anybody or you know but uh thank you so much for the time praise joshua hallelujah that concludes our wednesday zoom and we want to thank all our visitors for coming out to study with us and we we love the support on our little zoom class um, i don't have the the one slide that, that Sherry usually uses, but I'll just um, recite where we have class and when. So we do, ha we meet here every Wednesday from seven to nine. And then we also have our in-person class at 9036 Brittany Way in Tampa. That's room 310. And that is on Fridays from 730 to 930 and on Sundays from 11 to 1. Let's all be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah.